out YouTube. I've been doing one of these in a while. I'm doing an episode of Bear Business and BS. Um, I don't think I did any of these in 2020. I may have. I don't remember. 2020 sucked. I think everybody's of the same opinion. Um, the uh, election sucked. I personally think this year's going to suck. But on a positive note, um, I've stayed busy. Hopefully y'all have too. Um, I have not found any problem finding work. It has not slowed down one iota for the customer base I have. Um, keeping up with another YouTuber on here kind of does the same kind of work that I do. I think I'm kind of figuring out what my issue is. Um, I do live in a low income level area of the country. Um, it's not as low as Mississippi, but pretty close. Um, and so the customer base here doesn't make a whole lot of money. The minimum wage, medium incomes, probably somewhere in the 50 to $60,000 range. However, there are there is a customer base in every area that is willing to pay, um, you know, high wages for quality work. Uh, for example, I've got a contractor buddy that does nothing but install really awesome, elaborate pool houses and gazebos and um, decks. He just finished a jet a deck on a sixty eight hundred square foot house. The deck alone was two hundred thousand dollars. That gives you any in, uh, insight into the. Even if you are in a low income area or a, a, me, a low medium income area, so the the average uh, take home for everybody in your area is really low. There's always going to be a customer base out there that you can attack, um, and he's proof. Like I said, of course he's hitting up doctors and lawyers and business owners and you know people that make well over a well, $200,000 deck that's and I believe they paid him cash for all that so they've got a lot of excess money just sitting around to do projects like that so there is a, I'm convinced there is a a layer of customers that are willing to pay high no matter what your medium income is in your area I haven't figured out how to crack into that um, granted I do do any advertising I stay slammed year-round um, and I do everything from remodels to little honeydew list the thing is is my customer base I've got a ton of repetitive customers so probably 90% of my business is repeat customers However, they are primarily older folks that either physically can't do it anymore or single females that don't have the ability to do it or just have enough money to pay somebody to do it. <clears throat> and a vast majority of them don't have $200,000 excess income that they can throw around on a deck or something. So There's very few contractors that make that kind of money in my area. Um, but another YouTuber that I had listened to had also mentioned about the dangers of your customers becoming your friends and a majority of my customers would adopt me tomorrow because I'm the, about the same age as their children um, and uh, you know they give me Christmas gifts and you know it's a uh, it's an excellent relationship I've got with them because they'll use me for anything. I mean, there's nothing. If they wanted a two hundred thousand dollar deck, I would be the one they use. They're just not in that income level where they've got that kind of frivolous money. So, kind of curious what your feedback is in your area. Um, I guess what I'm getting at is, yeah, the medium income in an area it kind of does set your tone for what your business can make. But anywhere, I'm convinced anywhere there is a class of customer or a geographic segment of customers that are willing to pay whatever the cost is um, 
a lot of the business that my contractor buddy gets, they basically just tell him what they want, yeah. roughly. You know, I want a deck and a pool put in. And he kind of talks to them, figures out what, you know, what their taste is, and builds it, and he just builds them. They, they don't care what it costs, so. Um, uh, so there are a, a segment of customers that are in that, that uh, area. Most of the ones in my area probably are at the stage where they're living in, you know, higher end homes for my area. Um, you know, in my state, <laughs> houses over a million dollars is like probably less than 1% of what's on the market. So a vast majority of them are, you know, well under quarter million dollar homes. But those that are in those higher end homes have had them for about the amount of time that it is time to start doing upgrades and remodels and stuff. Um, but I'm just waiting to get the right return customer that knows some of those people. So. Um, the other thing you can do, and it probably works real well, is to get out and do door-to-door uh, -to -door in some high-end neighborhoods or even um, getting in with people that do property management. Most of the property, larger property managers in my area have their own maintenance crews that do all the work for them, so they don't hire guys like me to do stuff. Um, I've had a couple, a couple of them when they first started up use me, and they ended up getting their own maintenance crews because they had enough to keep maintenance guys busy. Um, so, you know, there's, there is a way to tap into that market. Um, I just, I'm, I stay too busy to get around to that. So unless I want to get particular enough and raise my prices enough to kill the repetitive customer base I have now in order to go out and get larger customers, um, I think you got to worry about there is the customer base I have now pays. They always pay. I don't never have to worry about getting pay. I may not be making a, a ton of money, but I don't have to worry about a customer paying because all the customers, like I said, 95% of my customers that are business is repeat customers. And I never have to worry about them paying a bill. With doing cold calls off Craigslist or um, going door to door, you don't have any idea what kind of uh, customer you're going to get into. You could get into somebody who's Fired the last seven contractors that's worked for him. And in my experience, doing this about 11 years, um, that is a red flag out of the gate. If you start talking to the customer and all they can talk about is all the contractors they've fired in the past, it may very well be that they just can't get a good contractor. It could also be that they're a pain in the ass. So uh, just forewarning, um, those are usually red flags, red flags for me. Um, you know, if they've had one or two bad contractors is one thing, that's understandable. But if all they can talk about is all the people they fired that they've tried to get to do stuff, um, that's, that's a pretty good warning sign that that job's going to be a pain in the butt. And the few new customers I've taken on over the years, um, referrals of referrals of referrals, that have started out like that have ended up being an absolute nightmare. Um, they were just anal to the T, meticulous as all get out, you couldn't please them, <laughs> no matter what you did. Um, so just watch out for that. I have, I have had some that have worked out, um, but that's usually a really good sign if all they do is complain before you even make an estimate, a um, bit extremely high. Um, and some of those turned out. I've, I had a customer that had used me for everything, older, older couple, and uh, loved me, uh, loved everything I did for them, but I never got one single referral from that from them. And most of the time, if I have a really good customer like that, I'll get you know, after the first job, I'll get three or four calls from their friends because they've talked about the work I've done and wanted to refer me to do other stuff for their friends. Um, but this particular couple never never referred me to any of their friends. I don't know if they didn't have any friends or what. I don't know. Um, but they were real anal. But I didn't have any problem, you know, meeting their expectations. So, other than that, I uh, 
hope 2021 treats you well. So far, mine's not been bad. Recovering from 2020. Um, I do think on a non-political non note that uh, the prices of everything are getting ready to shoot through the roof. Um, I, I haven't read all the, the laws and everything, but every time they rage, raise minimum wage, none of the business is absorbed that. That all goes downhill and gets absorbed by the people that actually pay for the materials. So I have a feeling the dollar menus are getting ready to go away. They're going to be uh, $15 menus. So um, just a little footnote on that. Um, and then, let's see. Currently, I am working on a set of cabinet doors, which is what you see back here. I made these for a customer. She has an old mobile home, and the doors that are in there are just press board. The whole thing is made with one by twos, and press board, like quarter inch press board facial pieces, and then quarter inch doors. Um, so she wanted new doors. I basically went with half inch MDF, routed the edge to put some kind of design on it, um, which is gonna make it look better than it does now by a long shot. But in reality, it, it's one of those that probably needs to have the cabinets ripped out. But again, uh, my customer base is usually, you know, make it look nice, but I don't have the money to do what really needs to be done, so. There is money to be made there. I make a decent living off of those type of customers. Um, I have a shed that I am doing pictures on. It's a shed that I built five or six years ago and uh, had some subs working for me at the time. It's a, I, I'm not going to blame everybody, but it, 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 I'm the lead contractor on it. It's 100% my fault. I should have done it differently or foreseen some of the issues we had. But in a matter of that time frame, all eight floor joists have rotted totally out. A two by eight floor joists totally snapped, and the Advantex flooring is bowing real bad. If it wasn't, if I'd have put cheaper flooring in that, unfortunately, this older guy would have probably fell right through. So it's a good thing that I didn't skimp any on the materials. Um, the flooring did hold. He had a ton of crap stacked in there. But I'm in the process of um, redoing that flooring. Ripped it all up. I've got a demo video online you can see. And then I am working on a termite damage job. I'm going to finish that up tomorrow, and I'll have a video posted before this weekend's up on the second phase of that. So first phase was tearing all the outside off and the roofing, <clears throat> doing everything from outside. And this tomorrow, I will be demoing the inside and replacing all the termite damage from down below and then repairing the sheetrock, putting new popcorn ceiling back in and buttoning it all up. Um, so those are my two big jobs right now. Most everything else I've got going is just little, little stuff for customers. I'm hoping to get a large remodel here pretty soon that I'm bidding on. Um, other than that, not I don't have any real big jobs going on. Those two are pretty decent size for me. I am a one-man crew. And like I mentioned before, uh, this is my second shift job. I work a full-time job as well. So, um, so it is uh, plenty of work, but looking for some big remodels this year. So, hopefully, y'all like the content. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Cheers, and see you later.